Greetings, ghouls. Let's drink blood pools. <laughs> this is your host in the Crypt of Terror, the Crypt Keeper, ready to lead another scream session by narrating one of the nauseating novelettes from my creepy collection of lurid literature. So hold on to your last meal. <laughs> Here goes with the foul fable I call Out of His Head. The faint wisp of smoke curled upward from the dancing fire and drifted lazily over the campsite. Alex slipped from the tent, the gleaming cleaver in his gloved hand, the perspiration painting his face in the firelight. He grimaced. Stanley knelt before the flames, stirring the smoke-blackened pot. In a moment it would be all over. In a moment Stanley would be dead and Alex's problem would be solved. He moved forward noiselessly, lifting the razor-sharp cleaver high above his head. This will be done in a minute, Alex. Mmm, smells delicious. Everything ready? <laughs> Everything's ready, Stanley! Stanley stiffened as Alex's high-pitched voice exploded behind him. He whirled, too late. Alex brought the gleaming cleaver down with all his force. Alex, my god, yo! It was quiet in the woods that surrounded the hunter's campsite, Far away in the at night, an owl hooted. Alex stared down at Stanley, crouching as if stunned. The cleaver sunk deep into his head, the handle jutting upward awkwardly. Ugh. Alex hesitated, a wave of nausea sweeping over him. Stanley just crouched there as if frozen, not standing, not falling, just staring at him with dead, glassy eyes that seemed to burn with a flame of sudden understanding. Die! Die already! Fall down and die! The horror of it, the cleaver sticking upward, the blood curtaining down over the frozen, surprised face. Alex turned away, covering his eyes. He would remember it always, the horror of it. Behind him, he heard Stanley's body slump to the damp ground. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. The horrendous deed was done. Loath to gaze upon the bloody remains of his former law partner, Alex moved in into the tent, picked up his gun and the knapsack he'd packed previously, and strode out of camp. <laughs> I'm rid of him for good. Everything is mine now. No one knows we were up here together. They'll think he was attacked by a maniac. He traveled swiftly through the woods, finally reaching his car, the gun, the knapsack, and his hunting clothes, including the shoes that had left telltale tracks around the camp, were carefully disposed of. Alex dumped them in a river on his way home. Ah, there. Now to drive back to the city and sneak into the apartment. Alex arrived at his apartment building towards morning. He slipped back in the same way he'd left, through the cavernous catacomb-like cellar, when he reached his penthouse door. He quietly lifted the Do Not Disturb sign from the door knob. Perfect. <laughs> my alibi is perfect. I've been in my apartment since yesterday afternoon. I'd felt ill and didn't even go with Stanley on his hunting trip. Alex smiled. It had all been so simple. He slipped the key into the lock and turned it quietly. The door swung open. Alex stepped in. The dawn light was beginning to filter through the huge French doors leading out onto the balcony. Now, to get undressed and ring down for some breakfast, I... Oh, hey, there's somebody who's out there on the balcony. I... I... Oh, good Lord! The silhouette on the balcony moved towards the French doors, the early morning sunlight gleaming on the steel blade of the cleaver stuck in its head. My God, Stanley, no! No! Fear and revulsion pounded down into Alex's heaving stomach. He lifted his clenched fist to his mouth, closed his eyes, and screamed. <coughs> when he opened his eyes, the figure on the balcony was gone. Alex stared out at where it had been, sick trembling. It's, it's all my imagination. Stanley's dead. He's back upstate, deep in the woods. I'm seeing things. There was a pounding on the front door. Alex spun around. A voice drifted through. You all right, Mr. Melton? I, I'm fine, Sammy. I was uh, having a bad dream. I just, uh, just woke up. W uh, will you have my breakfast sent up? Alex listened to the footsteps of the house porter, fading down the hall. He hurried towards the bedroom. I gotta get into my pajamas quickly. Got to... Oh, Lord, no! The figure stood in the center of the bedroom floor, its glassy eyes staring out from the blood-covered face, the cleaver sticking awkwardly out from its rent skull. 
No, no, I won't look, I won't! Alex covered his eyes, shutting out the horrible sight, and when he opened them again, the figure was gone. <sighs> that's, that's better, I've, I've got to pull myself together. My nerves are shot! Alex undressed quickly and slipped into his pajamas. He just finished buttoning them when the knock on the door announced Sammy's return. Breakfast, Mr. Milton. <laughs> okay, Sammy, uh, just one minute. Alex slipped into a dressing robe and opened the door. What the? <gasps> What's the matter, Mr. Melton? The figure stood behind Sammy, grinning, its eyes wide and burning, its head tilted crazily as if the cleaver embedded there was too heavy. Alex closed his eyes and turned away. I said, what's the matter, Mr. Melton? <laughs> N nothing, Sammy. <laughs> nothing. Just tumbled it over there to the couch, eh? After the house porter left, Alex sat down and stared at the unappetizing food. There was no hunger in him, no desire to eat. He'd only ordered the food to establish his alibi. He retched and looked away. Oh, God, no, not again! It stood there, bloody, swaying, its eyes bulging, its teeth bared in a death grin. Go away! Go away! Oh, Lord! Alex jammed his eyes shut. When he opened them, the apparition was gone. <laughs> you gotta have a drink. I'm a nervous wreck. He staggered across the huge, luxurious living room to the well-appointed bar. The gurgling whiskey pouring into the glass sounded like distant laughter. It's all in my mind. I keep seeing what isn't there. I keep... No! No! As he lifted the glass to his lips, the figure stood before him, grotesque, appalling, sickening. The liquor bottle smashed on the polished hardwood floor. Alex shut his eyes. You are not there! I don't really see you! He opened his eyes. The figure grinned at him, stupidly, bloodily, the shining cleaver wedged deep in its skull. Oh, God! Go away! Leave me alone! He shut his eyes again, shutting out the awful sight. You won't look! I won't! You can't make me! One minute passed. Two. Alex opened one eye. Oh, good lord, it's still there! He clamped the eyes shut again. With his eyes shut, he couldn't see the horrible sight. With his eyes shut, he was free of it. He waited. After a while, settle down. It'll go away. Ah, drink. I, I need a drink. He turned with shut eyes to the bar, feeling for a glass, a bottle, knocking them over, spilling, smashing. Finally, in desperation, he opened his eyes. The figure was behind the bar now, smirking at him. It was torture for him, trying to move about with shut eyes, trying to find his cigarettes, a match, trying to satisfy his cravings. He couldn't help opening his eyes, and when he did, the figure was always there. Finally, a blindfold! <laughs> I'll fool him, I'll show him! <laughs> I can beat him! There! He sat with the blindfold over his eyes, sat all morning and into the afternoon. Sammy came and went, Alex refusing lunch. He staggered around the apartment. Ugh! Where are those blasted cigarettes? He felt the cigarette urn pitch over, drop to the floor. He went to his hands and knees, feeling for them, cursing, reaching, not finding one. Finally, he tore the blindfold from his eyes. Ah! The figure was there, lying on the floor, grinning up at him. No! No! I'll show you! He got to his feet, stumbled towards the kitchen. The figure stood before him, barring his way. I'll... <laughs> I'll show you! Wherever he looked, the figure. He rummaged through kitchen drawers. You can't make me see you! He found what he was looking for, lifted it in a white-knuckled, trembling fist. If, <laughs> if I'm blind! An ice pick. The pain, the screaming, unbearable pain of plunging the ice pick, first into one eye, then into the other, and the welcome darkness that followed. Sammy's face blanched white when he saw Alex kneeling on the kitchen floor, blood pouring down his cheeks like crimson tears. Oh, good Lord! Alex must have fainted after that, swallowed up into his self-imposed darkness. He floated in it, hearing the faint scream of a distant siren, the muttering of subdued voices, the sound of a motor, the sweet smell of anesthetic. And then, an eternity later, he felt hands touching him, moving about his blind eyes, unwrapping bandages. There, there we are. No, no! 
He could see again. Oh, God, they had made him see. They had repaired his stabbed and bleeding eyes, and he could make out the figure before him, dim, hazy, swaying, with a gleaming object sticking out of the center of its head. Oh, Lord, no! Stanley, he would always see Stanley. There would be no escape, never. Here, here in this hospital room, Stanley was staring at him, the meat cleaver shining in the red skull. Alex leapt from the bed. Wait, there's another way, Stanley. Another way, another way! The splintering of glass, the fading scream, the thud of a body rupturing and smashing against solid concrete twelve stories below. Alex had solved his problem. The figure with the shining object in the center of its head moved to the window and looked down. The sunlight glinted upon his head reflector as the doctor shrugged sadly. <sighs> mad. Absolutely mad. So that's my yarn, kiddies. Alex finally got rid of Stanley for good by getting rid of himself. Ditto. Anybody want to buy a splattered corpse? There's one outside City Hospital. No. How about one with a cleaver in its head? Upstate, near a camping site, there's... No? Huh. Cheapskates. Well... This is CK, turning you back to VK, okay? <laughs>